everyone, I just want to show some more of my recent finds. So to get things started, I found P.J. Harvey's to bring me my love. I actually found this for only $9 on Amazon somehow. It's actually somewhat hard to find. And I looked again, I think it might have been repressed. It was uh, also available for about $28. So I'm really surprised I found it for so, such a low price. But it's a really uh, raw album from her, one of her earlier albums. Just more of a, a rock album, alternative rock. And it's really great, it has some great tracks. Uh, down by the water, I remember seeing a video on MTV back in the 90s. And it's just a really great album from her. This is Sleater Kinney's One Beat. And as the title implies, this is more of a drumming. The focus on this album is more on the drumming from Janet Weiss. She's a great drummer. And uh, unfortunately they broke up in 2005. I was lucky enough to see them just before they broke up. And they're a great live. They're still, they actually just formed a couple new bands, one of them being Wild Flag. And uh, Corin Tucker formed her own band also. So they are still performing in different, uh, different forms. But uh, yeah, this is just really good, straightforward rock music, indie rock, excellent album. This is Betty Davis. Betty Davis was the wife of Miles Davis. This is a, a mid-70s funk soul album called Is It Love or Desire? This is a Sun Days issue. It's actually not a reissue. It was actually never released back in the 70s. It was just recently released for the first time a few years ago. And it's really surprising because it's really great. It's a great album. This is a limited edition maroon vinyl version. And if you like funk music, this is a really good one to check out. Betty Davis. This is Colin Stetson with New History Warfare Volume 2 Judges. It's almost entirely made with just a saxophone. Um, it's, it's pretty experimental, but at the same time, it, it also keeps your attention and it's very enjoyable to listen to. And he plays a bass saxophone, which is actually the biggest and lowest saxophone, I believe, that is available. And it even features some, some vocalists, such as Lori Anderson, on it. And it's really amazing to hear this guy play. He uses circular breathing and just these continuous streams of notes flowing out from the saxophone, and it's just great. Milton Nascimento and Mo Borges with Clube de Esquina, a mid-60s pop rock album from Brazil. It's really good. If you, if you don't even know Portuguese, don't understand the language, it doesn't matter. The music itself is still very, very enjoyable. And it's very highly recommended. In the same order, I also picked up Forca Bruta from Georgi Ben. This is kind of along the same lines, but a bit more singer-songwriter oriented, a bit more folky. But also another great mid-60s Brazilian album. Both of those were Four Men With Beards reissues. And I can't really do a new vinyl video without showing some techno. This is Basic Channel's Liat Remix. It's their third release back in the 90s. This one actually kind of stands out in their catalog as being more ambient and a bit more unique. It has, has some regular techno beats kind of underneath, but on the surface there are just these weird, almost ambient sounds and a lot of bass. It's an excellent track, and the B-side is more of a straightforward techno track, but it, this is a really good release from them. Someday I plan to have all of their stuff. I just love Basic Channel. This is Harold Groskop with Synthesis. This is a reissue from RVNG International. Um, originally released on Sky Records, Harold Groskopf was a member of Ashra Temple and Klaus Schultz. 
back in the late 70s, Krautrock. So this guy was actually the first person to ever use um, sequencers live. So he's a big figure in electronic music and this album kind of went unnoticed for a while. It was just recently reissued and it includes a CD with remixes. It's a really great early electronic album. This was one of my favorite purchases out of this bunch. This is R.E.M.'s Chronic Town. Again, I have to thank, thank um, Elobox or Rob for this. I probably wouldn't have picked it up without that R.E.M. video he made. And this is just fantastic. Every one of these five songs is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I was surprised to find... Uh, I was expecting this to be a black black vinyl edition, but I brought it home, opened it, and it's on blue vinyl. And apparently it's limited as well. I got it for a good price, and it's just... I was very happy to get this one. I also picked up a couple of used vinyl, which I don't usually do. But they were for a really good price, and this is Joni Mitchell's uh, Don Juan's Reckless Daughter. A mid-70s release from her. Uh, it's not her her best, but it's actually really surprisingly good. It's, it's a lot different than her earlier work. It's more jazzy, lots of jazz drumming. It could almost be considered a jazz fusion album. And it even features uh, Wayne Shorter on saxophone on a couple tracks. It's very good. This is the Moody Blues. I heard someone talking about the Moody Blues on here. I think it was Derek, but uh, yeah, just late 60s, psych rock. It's progressive. It's called In Search of the Lost Child, and it has a really nice cover. That's what caught me at first. And then I put it on, and I was surprised at actually how much I liked it. I had never really, never really knew anything about the Moody Blues. I mean, based on the name, I thought it would be more bluesy, but it's not very bluesy. It's more psychedelic. It even has a track devoted to uh, Ken Kesey, I believe that's his name, or a Timothy Timothy Leary. It's called Legend of a Mind. Just a great psychedelic rock album. This is Games with the EP That We Can Play. This is an electronic, kind of sample based uh, EP. One of the members is Oniotrix Point Never, who I also mentioned in my Favorites of 2010 video. And this has a lot of interesting samples. If you grew up in the 90s like me, maybe you had one of the original PlayStation systems. Uh, the opening sound when you turned on the PlayStation is sampled here, and it's just really nostalgic and interesting to hear. Very good. This is Destroyer's Street Hawk, A Seduction. It's a, I just kind of fell in love with his new album. It's awesome. This one I haven't quite gotten into as much yet, but it's, it's definitely still very good. It's more of a straightforward singer-songwriter album, and he's known for his kind of clever lyrics. And I'm not a person that really pays attention to lyrics much, but they are pretty intriguing, and it's a very good listen. More uh, indie folk, I guess you could describe it, indie pop. And the last one I have here is James Carr, with You Got My Mind Messed Up. This is a great kind of lost album from the 60s. Uh, to me, his voice and delivery is just as good as, say, Otis Redding. He definitely belongs in that category with Otis Redding and Aretha Franklin of 60s soul music. And somehow it's not quite as well known. I don't know why, but unfortunately, this is a pretty poor reissue. Uh, gold. Gold Wax Records reissued this and it, it doesn't sound very good. It has a kind of weird stereo mix and even I heard some kind of clipping in one of the songs. It almost ruined the album for me. But the album itself, the music itself, is great. 
If you could find this on CD or maybe even an original copy, it's definitely worth picking up. It's a great sold album. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed what I got. Uh, I'll see you later. This is Actress in the Background, one of my favorites from 2010. Enjoy.